Welcome back, this is Sandy with Sandy's Organized Chaos, and today we're going to be doing this three-tone ombre with leopard print. Now this is kind of a remake of something I already made two years ago, around when I first started YouTube, but it's still so pretty and I really enjoy these around summertime. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and let's wake up, prep these tumblers, and slay all day. Let's do this. All right, we are starting off outside. I have my tumbler here. Now I've already prepped and primed my tumbler. I tend to do that when I get all my tumblers in just so I can grab them and go if I need to. If there's certain things I wanna do, I just kinda of do that. So there's no need to pre-paint it white if you don't want to. All right, so the colors that I'm gonna be using today, this one is called Seaside. The next one I have here is this pretty coral and that's just called coral <laughs> and i'm also going to be using a very pale pink which is called candy pink i know i've had this can for a while it looks <laughs> it looks a little crazy but it still works <laughs> so i'm going to just go ahead and grab my glove here and i'm just going to put that on so that i don't get my hands all gunked up with my spray paint the first thing i always do is just prime up my cans i shake them up really good give a couple spritzes and if you find that your cans getting all gunked up just flip it upside down and spray it until it sprays clear and then give it a good spritz again and that should clear up your problem that you're having with your spray paint so now I'm just gonna move right into doing my ombre here. I'm gonna start with my blue first. Now the, the only thing is with these handled ones, you gotta make sure that you get up inside the handle. And I want you guys to see how far back I'm holding my can. That's so that way I don't accidentally puddle up the paint as I'm spraying. So I just make sure that I get all up inside of there, make sure it's about halfway up because we wanna make sure we have three equal sections. Okay, so the, this first part of us going over it is just kind of like a template and then we're gonna come back through and just kind of fine tune our ombre after we get everything on here. And again, with the coral, I'm just gonna make sure that I get up inside of that handle, make sure it's covered really well, and then I'm gonna move on to that light pink. Now, I know you guys notice I'm kind of all over the place with my spray paint. I'm, I'm trying my best to keep it in place, but like I said, we will kind of fine tune that here in a second. But with my pink that I'm gonna be using here, I'm gonna make sure that I kind of stay more in line of where I need to be. So as you see, I'm doing more straight lines rather than trying to fade it up and down. That's just so that way I can have that nice gradient coloring after I'm done here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do up this. You see, I'm just spritzing straight across making sure I have a nice line there. And then I'm gonna come back through and start doing my other colors one more time. And I'm gonna do the same thing where I hold it up straight and just start wisping it sideways in a straight line. So that way it has more of that gradient look. And then I'm gonna come through one more time with my coral and I see that I missed a spot on the top or on the bottom of the handle there. So I'm gonna to touch that up one more time. And after I'm done, as long as each segment is about the same size as the next segment, we are good to go. That's all you wanna do is just split it up into three different segments. All right, now we are back inside. It's nice and dry and we're ready to start applying our glitter. So the glitter that I'm using today is a bit is a bit semi-transparent, so there is some transparency to it, so that's why we went ahead and did up our base and the colors that we did to really make sure these glitters pop. But the first one there is called Cora, then I have Poppy, and this one is called Periwinkle. So the Cora is gonna go with the coral, Poppy with the light pink, and Periwinkle with the blue that we used. And I'm gonna be applying my glitter with my amazing sealer today, but you can use the epoxy method if you'd like to. I just like doing it this way because it's gonna make it go by a little bit quicker because I, I do everything right on top of each other I don't do epoxy in between. We're going to do our leopard print right over top of this right after we're done. So that's why I'm doing it this way today. All right, our glue is applied and we are ready to start doing up our glitter. So I'm going to start with the very bottom first. I'm going to take my poppy and I'm just going to load up that bottom really well and then just gradually bring it over the edge, letting it cascade down into my second color into the middle there. Now for the center color, we're gonna do it a little bit different since it is in the center, we want it cascade up and down. I'm going to take my Cora, I'm gonna sprinkle that directly into the center of my stripe, and then I am going to tilt my tumbler down, letting it the glitter cascade that way onto the pink, and then tipping it up, letting it cascade into the blue area, and that's really gonna give us that three-tone ombre look that we're going for. 
Now, as I was going, I noticed my handle did dry a bit quicker than I planned, but that's okay. We're gonna come back through and I'll give that handle a second coating. Now we're gonna move on to our last color. This is called Periwinkle, and I'm just gonna start up by the rim, and again, just completely letting that cascade straight down into my color below it. And you just made yourself a three-tone ombre tumbler. I know you guys got this. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry just for a little bit, and then I'm gonna come back through and I'm gonna touch up my handle really quick. So there's no need to do the whole tumbler, just my handle. I'm gonna make sure that I apply my glue the same way that I did the first time, and I'm just gonna do the same ombre effect onto the handle as we did onto the tumbler. So I'll just take my glitters, let them cascade, make sure I get up underneath there as well, and there we go. So I am gonna set that off to the side and let that fully dry. The reason why I want it to make sure that it's fully dry before we move on to the next step is one, because we like to sweep off all this extra glitter so that way our brushes don't get gunked up when we go to do the leopard spots. But you also don't want this glitter that we're about to use to stick onto our tumbler in places you don't want it to stick to. So we're gonna go ahead and sweep all this extra glitter off really good. And then I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to coat it, give it a light coating with my two times ultra spray. Again, this is just to help out our brushes not getting gunked up. Now that that's all said and done, we are ready to move on to our spots. And for the spots, I'm going to be using Sarah. It's just a really pretty, like, purpley color with opals. And I'm also going to be using black diamond. And I'm also going to be using a black acrylic paint. And then I just have this old brush that I had laying around. I had it in my makeup kit. You can use any type of brush. Usually I use a chip brush, but I wanted my spots a little bit smaller this time around. So I'm using a little bit smaller of a brush today. So I am gonna use glue to apply the main spot and then I'm gonna be using my black acrylic paint to apply the outer portion of the spots. But if you wanted to use a coordinated color for your inner spots to apply that glitter, you can absolutely go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a big dollop of my glue and we're just gonna make some fun spots. And what I mean by fun spots is they don't have to be perfect circles. You want them to kind of be, you know, a little lumpy and bumpy looking, you know? You want them to have a little bit of shape to them. You don't want them to be exactly perfect round circles. But if you guys have seen me do leopard spots before, you guys know I, I like really big leopard spots. And so this is kind of a little bit not typical of what I do. So for my spacing here, I'm just trying to keep them about, they look about an inch apart, but I'm just trying to keep in mind that there is gonna be a black outer ring and you wanna make sure that you still have enough space for that to go around each one of your circles. So after you get your first section filled in, you're gonna go ahead and apply your glitter and then you're just gonna keep going completely around your tumbler. Now I am gonna be showing you guys a little bit better how I do my handle as well. So I'm gonna start off with doing the spots around the handle first. This is just going to be able to give me a good view of where I'd like the spots on the handle because you don't want them to look too mashed up together. So after I looked at it, after I applied those, I want one about right there and you just apply your glue. You're not worried about the underneath of the handle, just the top of the handle. And then I think I want another one around the bottom of the handle as well. So again, I'm just going to take my glue, kind of pounce that up onto the handle like so, kind of around it, kind of make it look like it's, it's connected to the handle. And there we go. Now the handle is done. Now I'm just going to completely do up this entire tumbler in my spots again keeping about an inch space of all of them and I'm also making sure that I do the bottom as well you don't want to forget about about the bottom you're gonna go ahead and sprinkle your glitter on and then we'll be ready to move on to the outer ring of our spots all right that's all done and now I'm just gonna set that off to the side I'm gonna let it dry for about a half hour you just again want to make sure that none of the black glitter is gonna get glued down to our spot portion. So the first thing we're gonna do is just like our base, I'm gonna come through and sweep off any extra glitter. And this is your time also, if you didn't use an acrylic paint underneath, you can come through and do touch-ups if you need to, if your spots aren't as vibrant as you would like to. So that's when you wanna do this as well. But we're just gonna go ahead and sweep this off really good, and then we're gonna move on. All right, I have my black acrylic paint and I'm just using the same exact brush that I used for my spots. I just washed it off really good and it's good to be able to use for the outer ring. I have my black diamond all set up and we are ready to go here. So now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna load up my acrylic paint. I'm just gonna dabble it off a little bit because you don't want it too much on there, but you definitely want enough so that way your glitter is going to stick to it. And you're just gonna make these little half C shapes right around your spots. And again, these, these little 
half C shapes that you're going to be making, you're going to see as I go that I kind of make them a little bit more dramatic. You see, I kind of bring it up out into the middle of the tumbler a little bit. Again, they don't have to be exact. That's, that's the fun part about this is it does not have to be exact. Okay. So you want the little paintbrush lines in there. It'll, it'll make it look more like fur, you know, you want it to be a little bit more kind of swooped out and, and all that on, onto your spots. And that, that's going to make it look a little bit more realistic. I know it's like a rainbow leopard, but it's going to make it look more real, realistic. Now, as I go, you guys notice that after I sprinkle my glitter, my black glitter onto my lines there that some of that glitter is still kind of on the tumbler and I don't want you to worry about that because after it's all send on and after it's all dry again we're going to come through and sweep this off really good so and I'll show you guys that here in a second now after this is all said and done I am going to stick that off to the side and let it fully dry I just kind of stick mine off to the side and start on other projects that I need to do so that way I don't accidentally come through and start sweeping it off and I, I accidentally sweep that acrylic paint down you, you don't want that so <laughs> make sure you stick it off to the side make sure you let it fully dry this took about an hour or so for it to fully dry and then we'll start moving on to that next step all right it's nice and dry and now's the time that you really wanna make sure you get your little chip brush in there and sweep out any extra glitter. This is very, very important because you don't want any of these glitters shifting around on you when you go to apply your epoxy. So this is a, a big important step for you if you don't wanna add any extra little glitter. I I'm I made a little mistake, which I'll, <laughs> I'll show you guys when I start to epoxy it, but I'm gonna go ahead and sweep this extra glitter off really, really good. I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna give it two coatings of my two times ultra. I'm going to spray it down once with my with my two times ultra clear. I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to give it another spray over it one more time. And then I'm going to take my hand and rub my hand completely over the tumbler and make sure no glitter comes off on my hand. That's very important. If you still have glitter that's kind of moving around when you wipe your hand over it, give it another coating of your clear coat. And that's really going to ensure that none of these glitters are going to shift on you when you apply your epoxy. So I have my epoxy all mixed up here. I'm using 20 mLs of my epoxy. Now it was about right here at this point that I needed to adjust my wand, so I did that. And at some point, I had stuck my hand back down on the table in that brief moment there, and I had forgotten to clean up my table. And I still had a bunch of that black glitter on my table and because I knew it wasn't moving around on my tumbler. And so all that black glitter was on my glove and I smeared it onto my tumbler. Now. This isn't a big deal, and there was no way that I could pick all that out, so I decided I was just going to keep moving forward with it, and you know what? This is just a great way to kind of show you guys how we can kind of fix our mistakes, and actually, I, you know, nobody would have known. If I wouldn't have said anything, nobody would have known, but we're it's all good. So we're going to go ahead and apply this epoxy, and I'm going to show you guys how I fix that. All right, so on my turner, I'm going to go ahead and hit it up with my torch because it's going to be fabulous no matter what, right? <laughs> and I went through my glitter and I found something that I think would go really well. I'm using Disco Dots. It has a bunch of really pretty colored confetti dots in there and lots of pretty shiny, sparkly silver pieces in there as well. And I'm just going to completely sprinkle this all over my tumbler. And I tell you what, guys, happy little accidents because it really did add a little bit of extra to my tumbler. Did I want to do this to begin with? No, but we're fixing what happened and it's all good. We're moving forward. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle my, my glitter on here. I'm going to let my tumbler cure and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. All right, it's so the next day. It's nice and cured. And because I had to sprinkle that little bit of glitter over top, it is going to need another coat of epoxy over top of that raw glitter that we did. But first, I'm going to go ahead and clean up my rim before I get started on that. I'm going to take my razor knife, clean it, that up really good. And then I'm going to come through with my 100 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to work my way up to 180 grit sandpaper. I think I, I accidentally said it wrong to you guys a couple times before. I start with my roughest grit sandpaper first and work my way up to the finest and I'm only working on the rim here. So I just want a nice smooth rim. I don't want to touch the tumbler again because there is raw glitter on there. I'm going to go ahead and rinse that off really good to get off any little extra particles off of my tumbler. And then I'm going to apply another 20 mLs of my epoxy over top of this. 
Now what I just showed you guys, I did spray it down with my two times ultra because that raw glitter on there could wick away the epoxy. Before I applied my epoxy, I went outside and I sprayed it down with that. Now here it has its epoxy over top. I'm gonna let this cure and we're ready to add our decal. So I have a ton of these little decals that I've purchased from all over the place. This one in particular that I'm gonna be using today is from Gracefully Created. I'll make sure to put her shop down into the description box below. So I have a ton of these and I really need to start using them, I think. But the first thing is, is these um, are transparent. So it definitely needs something to go behind it before you want to apply it to your tumbler. So I'm gonna make like this box shape with my tape. I'm just gonna use my decal to kind of show me where I need to go to kind of make a template. And I'm just going to block off an area for my spray paint. But you just wanna make sure that you don't accidentally get your spray paint on other stuff. So I'm gonna take it outside and I'm just gonna give it a very light coating of white spray paint. And then I'm gonna bring it back inside and I'm gonna go ahead and peel that tape back. See, it's very simple, doesn't have to be anything crazy. We're gonna go ahead and peel back this tape and then I'm just gonna want to distress the outside of my box just a little bit because I just didn't want it to be just a full-on white box in the center of my tumbler. So I'm gonna take a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I just have 91% rubbing alcohol. I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm very, very lightly, I mean, I'm barely touching the edge of this paint here. And I'm just going to kind of give it a distressed look all the way around this box. So anytime that you do a painted image like this and you want to apply a water slide or a decal like the one that we're using today, you are supposed to always put a coating of epoxy over top of it because it, you could be able to see the outline of your image. But I didn't feel like doing that today. So instead, I'm actually going to take my UV resin and I'm going to give it a coating of UV resin over top of my paint so that way I can move on to putting on my decal and you won't be able to see the edge of my decal. So all you wanna do is just take your UV resin, make a nice thin layer of that UV resin right where you want your decal, right over top of our paint here. And you're gonna hit it up really good with your UV light and let that sit. I believe mine says about 13 minutes or you can just take it outside and let it sit outside. But you definitely want it nice and cured before you add your decal. Then all you're gonna wanna do, and I, I changed my mind on my decal. I decided on this one, I thought it looked nicer. I don't know. <laughs> I have so many, like I said. <laughs> and then all you're want, gonna wanna do is peel back your decal, place it right over top of your area there and make sure that you burnish it down really well. You don't want any little bubbles underneath. So I just like to take my little squeegee here, squeegee any little air bubbles out, and there we go. And then after this, I'm gonna give it its two last finishing coats of epoxy, and it is ready to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time.